Well, well, well. Good evening. Yeah. Kyle. Hello, Vladimir. How are you going? Good, good. Sorry, I couldn't hear you for a second, but it's okay now. Yeah, can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, it's okay. That's awesome. How are you? Good, good. Ready to do some sit-ups? <laughs> probably. <laughs> You've probably done your workout for the day. Actually, I didn't work out. You didn't do anything today? Mm -hmm. I was working all day. Oh, yeah. How's that going for you? Is this a new job that you got? Or is this something no, you've been no. doing for a while? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Vyaslav. Hello. Hello, Alan. How are you? Thank you. Yeah. Well, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. How was your weekend? Thank you very well. We play played uh, mm, all night from Saturday. Mm, to Sandy Bridge. Oh, Bridge! <laughs> yes, wow. and uh, all Sunday I uh, uh, sleep it. Sleep it. Uh, you were sleeping in, so you slept in all Sunday, yeah? Uh, yes. You slept in through Sunday. Oh, jeez. How many, uh, how many friends did you have? Uh, how what, many what, sorry? How many of you were there? How many did you play the game? Uh, we played si six person. Yes. All right. We take a hotel and uh, go to a restaurant, and later we uh, play all the night. <laughs> oh, it was, must have been a really good night. Yes. That's awesome. Did you ever play bridge, uh, Vladimir? No. No? I haven't. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, Vyaslav, do you want to explain? Can you explain how to play bridge, please? It's yes, the bridge play two couples, couple, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, we played uh, uh, half sport uh, bridge because we don't play, we play on the points, not to I don't know how it's in English this word. A robber. So, robber. Usually you you should have the first uh, part and the second part and that that is all. And and we don't play that. We um, count a score. Uh, yeah. How how many points you have in the car? This way you should uh, each uh, in each uh, uh, play. Uh, use all points uh, from your cards. Cards. Okay. That's it, yeah. Yes. Pretty much. So yeah. You have to gain as much more score as you can. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's always uh, two parts. Uh, the 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 first you you. Mm, <laughs> Say what you want to play. For example, four spikes or uh, uh, or uh, six no triumph, and uh, six or four. It's always six plus that what you said. If you said uh, four spikes, this way you should play ten. I don't know. Ah, it's very hard. Uh, <laughs> ten uh, times the card, and only three you can get away. Uh, oh, it's very difficult for me. No, <laughs> more difficult than than bridge. <laughs> here's a link, uh, Vladimir. Here's a link in case you wanna read up on it. There's basically that. Is it like you preference? No, I don't no. play preference. No, it's another. Uh, I I heard only um, about preference. It was 
uh, this uh, play, the people played 50 years ago, I think so. Now it's not so popular by us. Do you play preference? No. no Only no. virtually. No, no. That is the other play. Quite an, it's, I think it's very popular here in, in Ireland as well, bridge. We play bridge quite often. I haven't played it, I think, for ages. I probably forgot how to play it myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it, it's quite interesting. I mean, if, if um, Vyaslav and his, and his mates can stay up all Saturday night, I'm sure it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so, what did you do, Vladimir? Did you get up to anything on the weekend? Mm. Oh, I went to parkour gym at Saturday and I was solving some problems with my car at Sunday. Oh no. You had an issue with your car. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a big deal. Nothing big? That's good. As long as yeah. something small. You don't want to to be stuck with no car, maybe to spay, spend loads of money fixing it. I hate that. Um, well, my weekend, what did I do? Well, today is Monday, right? Yeah, it is Monday. I'm losing track of these days. Time's just flying by. I didn't do much on the weekend, actually, to tell the truth. I was stuck indoors. It's very windy here. We just had some storm going through. This now we have the dead storm in Poland. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's reached you probably. Yeah, yeah. Because it actually um, last night and this morning it was passing through the UK, and I think it must have reached you now already. Or mm -hmm. wow, that's quite fast. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was quite a bad storm. I mean, we didn't experience it as, as bad, but Wales, I think, and southern um, England, they, they were, you know, it was quite windy there. Uh, but it wasn't too bad, I guess. It's not like a typhoon that they have in Japan or whatever. You know, as soon as something like this happens in England, in the UK, they all have, you know, it's on the news. And, yeah, but in reality, it's not, not really that big. It's, it's, it's minor compared to others in America, for, for example, they have you know, huge tornadoes. Um, so did you learn how to play it yet, Vladimir? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I have yeah, to do it more carefully. Yeah. Maybe you can watch a video. I think the, the best way is probably if you just watch a video and somebody demonstrating it. And then you can... Uh, it looks like preference. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know preference. I don't know. I haven't heard of that. So maybe it's something similar. And you, uh, you probably yeah, you, you have to. Um, uh, it's also played in couple in pairs, yeah. You play in pairs. No, no, not in no? pairs. But you have to take how to say it, like a small game. Mm -hmm. What's the minimum number of players in preference? I think three. So with two you cannot play, it has to be three at least. Yeah, actually there are a lot of uh, card games, preference type. Mm, different types. Yeah. So like when, when you have to take the high card and Take yep. score. I used to play a game called I don't know if you know Remy or Remy. Do you know mm -hmm. Remy? Vyslav, did you hear about Remy? Yes, I heard about Remy Bridge. Uh, is the call the mm -hmm. title? I think so. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just I, I'm just known to uh, learnt it by Remy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be I similar to. Yeah, go ahead. I heard only with uh, connection with Remy Bridge, uh, because it may be similar, but I don't know the the, the um, 
play played mm. is this, the play oh, yes the, yeah this type of game yeah well with this well, with the Remy basically you have to also reach a minimum score uh, you're holding a lot of cards in your game uh, in your hands uh, I think it's about the 14 cards and then basically you know, all the pictures they count as 10 you know the ace is either 1 or 11 and then you have to have about 51 at least 51 a score of 51 before you can start putting your cards down and the whole point of this game is to get rid of all the cards in your hand in your hands that's the whole point so as soon as you get rid of all the cards in your hand you put them all down uh, then you've basically won. But you cannot put your cards down unless you have, for example, three sevens, right? Or maybe you have six, seven, eight, something other in order. Um, and it has to also be matching the, the you know, the, the, the symbol. If it's hearts, then it's hearts and, and so on. And uh, it has to be, when you're putting your cards down, a minimum score of 51. Right, or you can put them all at once if you can. If you can use that all at once and you're able to put them all down at once, that means it's called you've got a hand, full hand, uh, or something like that. And basically, you get the maximum score. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. I mean, is that the one that you are familiar with, Vesla? And uh, this way, you play only for own score, yes? Yes, yes, by yourself. You can play, just two people can play it, so me against you, mm. it's fine. In bridge, you, uh, sh should play all, always two couple, and that is interesting, because yeah. uh, usually one uh, person in couple make mistake and always they ah. try. They <laughs> <laughs> it would be more interesting, I, I, I agree uh, with you, yeah. And uh, sometimes... Uh, uh, it's a lot of mad people on the score in bridge, and uh, sometimes it's the really war later after uh, mm. oh, no. playing. But uh, by us, we haven't. Uh, it's one man, but not too much. <laughs> we always <laughs> cut them. <laughs> you can calm them down. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, as long as you're all friendly and you know, there's no yeah. fighting, it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. That's good. Look, actually, we've already, uh, you know, sort of begun to talk about um, tools and quantifiers. Which I was going to ask you a question for for the warmer, but since we already spoke about it, like how many players can play this game or this particular game, we spoke about that um, um, and so on. And the scoring. So, uh, so many, any, right? Much and some. That's what we're going to focus on. And uh, is there another one? Let me see. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, many, much, and a lot of, obviously. And um, so let's get cracking, guys. I'm pretty sure you guys don't have a problem with pronouncing many and much, do you? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me hear you. Um, okay. So I'm going to give you a sentence and uh, just read it for me, please, and I'll see if you guys are right and then we'll talk about it. So, Vyaslav, can you read that first sentence, please? I don't know many people. Who like re reggae, reg reggae music? music. Yeah. yeah, reggae music. That's it. Bob Marley's type of music. Yeah. Yeah. Vladimir. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Good. Yeah, both of you are. Right? Okay. Next sentence. Yes, love. She doesn't have any car ins insurance. Good. Love? She doesn't have any car insurance. Good. Okay, next one. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Good. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Good. 
Okay, and last one. How much does this cost? How much does this cost? Good. And I like your intonation, guys. You know, I always um, sort of highlight this. Whenever you are reading or speaking, uh, you know, try to put that accent, you know, get out of your com comfort zone. Try to impersonate a, a native English speaker as much as you can. You know? So if you want to listen to me the way I speak, you can copy me. Or if you want to, you know, uh, speak like a, like an American, um, with the American accent or dialect, you can. And uh, with this question, this last one, I noticed that both of you have done it correctly. You have that rising intonation. How much does this cost? Well, how much does this cost? Because it's a question, right? Uh, and also, much. You know, it's difficult for some learners. They might pronounce much. Actually, believe it or not, believe it or not, in England, there are certain parts of England where they pronounce it like that. <laughs> it's just the accent. That's how it is. But uh, the general English, you know, it's much rather than much. Um, I'm sure you've heard, heard some... Are you aware of that, Vlad or Vyaslav? Yeah, some English actually pronounce it as much. No, um, no. No? No. I don't know yeah. that some accents are quite weird, quite strange. Yeah, yeah, some of them you probably wouldn't even understand. I mean, um, when they speak quite fast, you go, what language is this? <laughs> um, there was... I don't know if you know, there was a, uh, a live show or some sort of, um, how do you call it, talk show. Yeah, it's a talk show, an English talk show, very famous one. And the host always has these celebrities that come, you know, and they, um, kind of movie stars, singers and whatnot. So Nicole Scherzinger, I don't know if you know Nicole Scherzinger. Uh, she's a singer. She's now currently in the X Factor, the, uh, the British X Factor. And uh, so she was at this talk show, and she's American. And so they they actually made her listen to various accents from from uh, the United Kingdom, <laughs> and she couldn't understand anything. So they made her repeat. So she had these big headphones on, like me, and then she was listening to a certain lady in the background speaking with this strong accent, and they made her. They made me call repeat. So the crowd, the audience didn't know what she was listening to. So they had the crowd had to guess what the celebrity was saying and pick out which accent it actually was or dialect. So it was hilarious. She didn't understand a word. It was just the the, the tone was different. You know, uh, for example, Scottish, the Scottish English, they have a strong accent. You know. And then you have uh, Liverpool side, you know, Newcastle. They have various different um, accents and the way of the way, way of speech. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, so, like we said, grammar. Let's do this. All right, plurals and quanti uh, plurals and quantifiers. You know, it's good to learn the irregular plurals. So let me show this to you. And I'm sure you know most of these anyways. You guys are okay. Um, it's supposed to be a three, 300 level, which is like um, yeah, higher intermediate. So, so there, are now, there are some nouns that you don't add S or ES to pluralize, as you know. So man becomes men. Woman becomes women. Person becomes people. Child, children. So these are completely irregular. Now, there are some which have a relationship. So basically, the vowel sound E, double E. So you might find certain... Um, you know, nouns like tooth, plural will be teeth. Fo uh, foot becomes feet. Goose, geese. So from a double O, it becomes double E. 
So this is one group, right? With the double E, with the double E sound. Then there's another group where the F changes, right, to V E S. So life becomes Vyaslav. Can you pronounce this word, please? Lives. Good. Wife. Wives. Wives. Knife. Knives. Knives. Excellent. And then another group is actually where there's no change. So dia, one dia becomes two dia. One sheep, two sheep. One fish, two fish. Yeah, there are some that say fishes, which is can be used, but uh, this is the more accurate, the grammatically correct, and uh, this is the norm. Okay, one one fish, two fish, one sheep, two sheep. Secondly, um, we can use many, much, and a lot of. So this is what we're going to focus on mainly. So many is for count nouns, much is for non-countable nouns. Okay, and a lot of can be used for both. So cars is countable. So there are many cars, so many houses, too many people. Yeah, so all this is countable. Now much water, water is not countable. So too much water, uh, too much ice, so much food, and you don't say. There is much water uh, or ice, etc. Yeah. So you throw in two or so much. Uh, there are a lot of cars and a lot of water. So you can say this when it comes to cars and water, both of them, countable and non-countable. Note that too many or too much is for problems. Uh, so much and a lot of are casual ways to say very. Okay. Like, I love you so much. Okay. It's like saying, I love you very much. Thirdly, you can use some and any. So these words both mean an uh, unstated small number. And how we use them is different. So, some. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Uh, because mm -hmm. I want to uh, ask about very. Can, can I? I can use um, very much by very many too. Uh, very many. No, you can't use that. Uh, especially if it's in a, in a similar context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, many. You just use. Uh, you can you say too many? Yeah, and depending on the actual noun. Mm -hmm. uh, but very is like a replacement in general. So instead of saying um, uh, so much is a replacement for saying very. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of is a replacement for saying very as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, no problem. And uh, so thirdly, you can use some and any. So here you gotta be careful because we're gonna use them in different ways. Some is usually used when the feeling is positive or neutral. So when the feeling is positive or neutral. So for example, I caught some fish today. That's good news, yeah. Mm. I had some good luck. Woohoo! You know, uh, you know, I don't know. You gotta. Um, pay rise, I don't know what happened. You know? So some good luck happened to you. Uh, well, pay rise wouldn't be from good luck, it'd be from your hard work. But anyways, it's positive. Any is usually used in negative sentences. So I didn't catch any fish. So here you're not going to say I didn't catch some fish. You're going to say I didn't catch any fish because of the negative sentence. Have you seen any good movies lately? See here, there is no negative, but it's a question. So any is is also used to make a polite request by making it sound less strong. Can I get you anything? 
Would you like any milk with your tea? So when there are questions, especially like polite requests, um, then we use any as well. And fourthly, you can pluralize some non-countable nouns. So this is an exception with some of these. So some non-countable nouns mean almost the same as a countable noun, like coffee, water, hair. So I want two coffees. For example, you're in a restaurant and you're ordering two coffees. You can say, I want two coffees. Or you can say, I want two cups of coffee. This is the more accurate or correct way to say it, but it's become a norm, right, an exception, to say two coffees. Um, pluralize non-countable nouns uh, to describe totally different types of them. So juice, metals, etc. So let's see. Smoking can cause harm versus the many harms of smoking. Yeah, there are many harms of smoking. Uh, because of smoking, you can have many um, bad things or that will affect your health negatively. Two pieces of candy versus the store has a number of different candies. Yeah, so here it's okay. Is candy non count? Well, usually it is, yeah. Yeah, really? But, yeah, <laughs> but in this case, you know. Uh, for example, if you want to, it depends on the country. If you're saying the store has a number of different candies, uh, you're referring to different types, then you can use it. You can say candies. Yeah? And same with plastic. Right? Three kinds of plastic, so versus the company makes a thousand different plastics. You're, you know you're referring to uh, types of plastics. Yeah? Types of plastic. Um, but most, is that confusing to you? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I'm sure that I can count candies. <laughs> it's not as small. Mm. Okay, let's let's break it down. Let's see. Candy is uh, this sweet thing, right? Like small. Yeah, small. It's, it's like a lolly lolly or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to remember it. Mm. But if I want to ask you to give me not one, two or three, how can I ask you? Can I have some candy, please? So can I can say, say some exact numbers. Number. Yeah. Uh, and then if they ask you how many would you like, uh, or is it how much? Yeah, so it will be how much in this case because it's not countable. So you say, um, it depends. If it's one lolly, uh, then you would actually have to say, uh, can I have two or three lollies? What uh, is it? Lolly, not a lolly, it's like a bonbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange uh, because I'm used to also hearing and I understand that it's. You can you can say actually I want I want two candies, you know. Um, but I don't know, in this case it looks like I have to get into I have to re read up on it and see the actual origin of candy, so we can understand it. But here they're saying that you know um, these are non-countable nouns. Uh, sorry, probably uh, Yeah, so they can pluralize non-countable nouns. So if these are non-countable nouns. Right? Candy is an uncountable noun. And you can pluralize it to describe totally different types of them. Mm -hmm. So candy, two pieces of candy. So this is usually what you would say. I, I mean, in the, in the, probably in the slang, if you go to the store and you say, oh, can I have uh, um, three candies? You know? Mm -hmm. you know, which ones would you want? Okay, these two, you know? But, you, you would usually say this, two pieces of candy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. two, um, and then maybe if you know the name, you would say the name of it instead of piece. So if it's some sort of jelly or gummy bear or whatever it is, 
then you'd actually have to name it because candy is general. You understand? Like plastic, yeah. uh, you know, like juice. Do you say, can I have two juices? It sounds strange, yeah? Yeah. So I have, I'd like, uh, you know, two glasses of juice. Yeah, two glasses. Yeah, same, same here. It's a similar thing. Because maybe you don't use it as often, you know, candy. Um, you probably, it sounds strange. Uh, but that's just how it is, you know. Um, it falls under that category of non-countable nouns. And, and also, finally, um, most non-countable nouns are never pluralized, like information, equipment, jewelry, and so on. So these ones are never pluralized. So there's no exception with them, like, you know, some of these about coffees and all that. Okay, so any questions? No. You see, yeah, it's, it, it oh, can get a, a bit tedious, a bit... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, recently I faced this word, criterion, and it's... Is it irregular for pluralizing or not? I put it into a chat. All right, all criterion. Mm. Criterion, yeah. Let's see. Um, so you want to know whether it's countable or non-countable? Yeah? No, no, how to pluralize it. Is it irregular or not? Oh, no, no, it'll be... Plural will be criteria. Criteria. Yeah. So the, the, the singular is criterion, and then criteria would be... Um, yeah, like this. I think, yeah, criteria is more common um, than criterion. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Um, criteria is a lot more common. It's just used in, a, in its plural sense. Okay? Yeah. You know what it means, okay, yeah? Okay, Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. All right. So, um, anything else, guys? Mm -hmm. oh, let's practice a little bit for a couple of minutes before we get into the article. So, give me a sentence uh, of a countable noun and use either many, much, or a lot of, a lot of. So a countable noun. So think of a countable noun and then form a sentence using either many, much, or a lot of. There's a little challenge. There are a lot of stars on the sky. Oh, good. But is it on the sky? In the sky. Yeah, in the sky. Because they're in, in the sky. On when you, you know, something on top. There are a lot of stars. Yes, excellent. In the sky. Yeah, just to remember. Could you also, could, could you also <laughs> use... Yeah, that's okay. Could you use another... Uh, could you say something else instead of a lot of... Would there are many mean? stars yeah. in the sky. Good, good, good. So many stars. Millions. Excellent. Do you want to try as well, dear Slav? Yes. They, there were uh, many planes at the airport. Good. There were many planes at the airport. Excellent. Yes. That's it. Now, give me a non-countable sentence. He puts so much sugar in his coffee. Do you agree with him, yes, love? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I, I have slipped. 
<laughs> Can I repeat? Yeah, Vladimir, repeat, please. He puts so much sugar in his coffee. Is he correct? So not non countable. Uh, yes. Yeah, excellent. So sugar here is non countable, excellent. So so much. We can't say so many. You could say a lot of if you wanted to. You put a lot of sugar in my coffee. And now I've got a sugar rush. I'm twitching. Or oh, diabetes. You get that sometimes? <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez. Um, I'm glad I'm, I don't have that. Yeah. I can eat as many cakes as I want. Uh, yeah, so let's see if we can do one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, ask, ask me a question. A polite question or request using one of the um, quantifiers. Would you like any sugar in the coffee? Yeah. Yes, love. You agree with him? You love uh, the sugar, don't you? <laughs> would you like any sugar? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. What do you say? What is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, what about a negative sentence? Yes, love. Give me a negative sentence. Uh, I. Uh... I don't drink uh, Coca-Cola. No, <laughs> I don't drink uh, tea. Mm -hmm. Any tea? Any tea. That's what I'm waiting for. Um, yeah, you can actually say without. I don't drink tea. Um, but if you wanna, for example, talk about last weekend or uh, or this morning, let's say. I didn't drink any tea this morning. You can say that. It's fine as well. Or I didn't drink any tea in general. Okay, that's good. So we understand this now. That's good. So any, we can say with a, a polite question or request or negative sentence. And, um, and uh, then you can reply using some. Yeah? And especially if it's neutral or positive. Okay. There's a lot more to this, but you know, we're not gonna cover. We don't have to cover all this yet. I think probably they'll develop more. Conigo will develop more like extensions of this. But for now they'll do. Uh, so let's do the article. Who wants to have six pack? I do. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about abs. Here's the link below. I've put it in the chat. So let's quickly read this. And if you guys are eager, because I know both of you like sport. Ooh, that's a very close-up on some abs. So the best ab workout ever, according to them, according to Alvin. Uh, Ghost growth. So, why abs? if it were for abs? dead guys, I'm sorry, why not abs? Oh, be because it's a workout. So you say the best ab workout. So ab is the short for abdominal. Yeah, I know. Short what? You don't have sorry? to say abdominal. Abdominal. Abdomen. Abdominal. Yeah. Abdomen. Yeah. Do you understand uh, your stuff? No. Uh, what mean workout? Uh, I don't. 
Understand. Workout is like an exercise, you know, exercise. Exercise the best. It's good, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked, yeah. And AB? AB means it's this, so this area here. This is your abdominal muscle yeah, your muscles. Belly. Your yeah, your ab abdominal muscles, your stomach muscles, you know. Another name for mm -hmm. like stomach. Uh -huh. um, usually, usually when we talk about exercising and workouts, you know, we talk, we say for this area here, your stomach area, we say abs, abs uh -huh. or yeah, yeah. I'm used to okay. abdominal. Yeah, we say uh, uh, my abs. Oh, I need to, I need to get a, get a six pack. This is a six pack. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. A pack of six. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So, uh, if there are probably going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of words which you might not understand, uh, you know, both of you. So if you can, just type them in the Klingo chat, and we'll cover them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's begin. If it weren't for dead guys, we'd prob probably never have started doing crunches. Crunches is one of the exercises you need to work out or to exercise your stomach or your, your abs. Or sit-ups or just about any other conventional ab, work, ab exercise or ab workout. That's because for years, much of our knowledge of the way midsection and other muscles work was based on the study of human uh, cadavers. I bet you don't know what this is. Okay, you note it down. We'll get to it later. Uh, by looking at the anatomy of corpses. Okay, that relates to this word. Yeah. Modern scientists figured that the function of your abdominals, particularly the rectus abdominis, or six-pack muscle, must be to flex your spine which is exactly what you do when you perform a crunch or a sit-up or any other movement that requires you to round your lower back. But despite the popularity of these exercises, they simply aren't among the most effective movements for building a rock-solid core. You see, your abdominal muscles have a more important function than flexing your spine. The main job is to stabilize it. In fact, these muscles are the reason your torso stays upright instead of falling forward due to gravity. So, in stabilizing your spine, your abs actually prevent it from flexing while you're standing, walking, and running. Here's my point. If you want better results from your core workout, you need to use a routine that trains your abs the way they're designed to function. That's not to say the classic crunch doesn't work. It does. But the future of ab training is all about stabilization. And guess what? The future is here. So this is what he wants us to do. Your hardcore training plan. Fair warning. Okay, this workout may not feel like your usual ab routine because the exercises focus on spinal stabilization instead of spinal flexion. Um, they don't create the same type of abdominal muscles uh, soreness that you might have felt from traditional core moves. Moving a muscle uh, against a force causes more muscle damage than resisting movement does. But that doesn't mean they're not working. In fact, since I began using this method in my gym, my clients are seeing faster progress than ever. So don't worry, not only will this workout make your core strong and stable, it will also make your ab muscles pop. The level 1 workout is the easiest and a good place for beginners to start. The level 2 and level 3 workouts are progressively more challenging. For the best results, do the workout that best matches your fitness level twice a week. 
So these are the three levels. This is what he was talking about. So the easiest one is just to do a straight plank on your elbows, resting on the elbows for about 30 seconds. I think it actually explains it. Um, so if you click on one of each, whatever you prefer, let's say we'll do the third level, because I think all three of us are quite fit, yeah? So you click on that, and that actually gives you more <coughs> description and uh, detailed explanation. So the extended plank, this is a stability exercise that trains your entire core, including your abdominal, lower back, and hip muscles. So it does quite a lot, actually. So you do two sets and 30 seconds. So you stand on this for 30 seconds, and then you rest for 30 seconds, and then do it again for 30 seconds. You can probably do more than that, I think. Um, and then there are other various other you can do as well to sort of top it up. But anyways, so. Um, uh, sorry. Let's go. What means set? OK, set. A set basically is um, if you're doing, let's say, uh, you know push-ups. You know how to do push-ups, yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's say you do 10 push-ups, and then you have a rest for maybe 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So now you have completed your first set. Then you do another 10 uh, push-ups, mm -hmm. which is then, that's your second set. Mm -hmm. So after you finish those 10, you rest again, and then you do a third set of another 10 push-ups. Okay, so that's three sets completed. Mm -hmm. So here they're saying you do two sets. So basically, one set is equivalent to 30 seconds of mm -hmm. standing in this position. Mm -hmm. Stand, stand the plank, yeah? And reps? Reps means repetitions. Ah, uh -huh, repetition. Yeah, so basically, uh, like 10 push ups are 10 repetitions, yeah? So in mm -hmm. this case, because you're just standing still, you don't have to do any repetition. So it's an A not available. And in this position, you should doing nothing, only so stand. Yeah, you just hold still and you have to, your abs, you have to sort of focus on your, your, your stomach. And uh, you have to really tense it. Have you tried this before? Yes, I, I have to try because I uh, I do nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's actually very easy. You can do it anywhere. You don't have to go to the gym. If you want to get rid of some jelly on your belly, you know, this is a very good way, way of doing it. Especially if you are kind of, uh, if you don't like doing sit-ups. Sit-ups or crunches are the same, really. Um, are one of the worst you can do. I mean, people hate it the most. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yes, so should we go back? Do you have any other word, any questions or any other word that you didn't understand? What is sit up? A sit up is when you're. I don't think I'll show it here. Sit up. When, when you're sitting on the ground on your on your on your backside, right? You're sitting on your bum. Mm -hmm. And then you're moving your, your upper body down and up. Mm. Okay, let me show you here. Sit up images. I thought it's crunch. So, yeah, it's the same. Sit up, crunch. There are different ways of calling it. So, yes. you do that. You go up and you go down. But it's uh, uh, bad for uh, core. Yeah, exactly. So the worker that's t that, 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 that they're telling us here, this is actually better for your core. Your core, which is your the, the strength of your complete body. Mm -hmm. You understand? So this strengthens your core of your ab your abdominal muscles. As well, it will define them. See, sometimes if you're not doing sit-ups correctly, it might actually damage your, your back. You might hurt your back, your spine, or whatever. And um, 
So you got to be careful how to do them. Use soft so mat. You know you just, you gotta, there's a lot of things you got to keep in mind. Soft mat, your movement. Sometimes it's better to keep your legs up like this lady here. Keep your legs up and then just move your, your, your head forward a little bit. There are many ways of doing it. You see, and uh, a lot of people that do it incorrectly and they end up hurting themselves. So, I mean, this is a good way to start. Now, see how you feel. If you do this for a week, then you tell me next week, how did you, how did you cope? I've, I've tried this recently, actually. When I made this lesson plan, I tried it at the gym, and it was all right. I mean, I, I can do more than that, and um, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't struggle. Yeah, it's, but it looks yeah. very... I've done this actually a, a while ago. It, it might seem easy, but I've done it a while ago uh, when I was in high school. We, uh, were, we were introduced by a, a kickboxing world champion. He came to one of our uh, schools or to, to the camp, and we were doing some of these challenges. So we had to do this, and the challenge was who can last the longest in this position. So you can imagine all of us were there for like a few minutes until we just dropped dead. <laughs> so that actually works. And if they do it, I mean, these martial artists, you know, then it uh, definitely works out. Because it works out your, uh, your arms, your shoulders, your, your chest, your, your core abs, you know, quite a lot. And if you keep clicking here, it gets you, gives you more descriptions and, and uh, tells you more details about it. Okay, guys? Yes. Any other words? I don't think I'll get to ask you any questions. Nothing. Everything's all right? Okay. So let's see. So what's the best way to work out your abs? And try to use our grammar skill. Try to use plurals or, and, and, and quantifiers. Well, you know, many, much, lot of, and so on. So, what's the best way to work out the abs? What do you think? Actually, you don't have to do a lot of workouts, but you have to be on a diet. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, yes. Yes. So your diet, you actually. Yeah. It, your it, diet is the it's most more important, important than uh, so much exercising. You're right. We already have uh, abdominal muscles. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not visible because of uh, the bad diet that we have. You're very, very correct in saying that. Right. But if you wanted to be uh, really, uh, let's say, fit, and you tra you're you know, training for a sport, let's say the football players, they have to have a really strong core. Their uh, torso or their waist and the, uh, you know, the abs, the abdominal muscles, <coughs> and the hips and everything has to be so strong because they're constantly running and turning and kicking. <coughs> so then you have to train. But a good, good uh, sentence. So you don't have to uh, do a lot of exercise. Just gotta have a good diet. Do you want to add anything, Vyslav? Mm. Uh, in this article, I think they uh, say that the best way to work out your uh, apes, 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 abs, abs, is uh, changing uh, your exercise. Yeah. From the spinal of spinal flexion to spinal stabilization. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I uh, do yeah, you, you the stab stabilization? Yeah, the stabilization. Yes. Basically, this is the stabilization. So you stabilize yourself. You keep still, rather than flexing. When you're flexing. Uh, your spine is flexing and you're doing the, the sit-ups and the crunches, you know. I mean, it works as well, but spinal stabilization, the reckon is, it's, um, you get more out of it. Okay, so next question. 
Would you agree that people make mistakes when working out their apps? Yes, I think that they make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, good sentence. Yeah, I think people who don't work out their apps make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm, I am. E even more mistakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much more. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So you gotta have some sort of activity. Yeah. Very Any exciting. activity is better than non activity. Yeah. But it is possible that the people who make exercise makes more mistakes than uh, this uh, who make nothing. Yeah, it can be. I mean, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, if you go to the gym, I don't know, sometimes you see these um, youngsters who are the re they're, really, they're really pushing themselves. But actually what they're doing, they're destroying their posture. Yes. Your posture means the way that they stand, the, the, way, the way that the body actually stands, you know? So maybe they're doing an exercise the incorrect way for months, maybe for years, and nobody's told them, or he, he hasn't or she hasn't found out that it's actually incorrect. And by the time all this is over, they realize they have either a sore, sore shoulder or sore back, or they might have a hump. Do you understand? So there might be a hump back in no time just because they were doing one exercise incorrectly. So it's very important that you understand yes. you know, what exercise you're doing and what you're actually trying to achieve and how to do it properly. The technique is important also. And last time, uh, uh, some people um, uh, was died on marathon because uh, they n never run and won't wow. start in marathon, for example. And exactly. As it's very, you know, I could talk to you about this for ages, you know, I mean, because I, I was involved yes. in this. And I, I'm sure you guys, we can all relate because you guys love sport as well. We're involved, uh, you know, in, in sport. And like these people that do marathons, right? They think they can just go, they train, they don't know how they can train. They go, they go for a few runs in a week and that's it. They think they're good to go. <laughs> they're not. When the marathon comes, if it's an hour or two hours of non stop running, your heart cannot handle it. Yes. Full stop. I mean, some people can, some can't. It depends on the individual, you know. And what happens then? They hyperventilate, and then they can't. They experience all sorts of shock. And then the body, uh, the immune system, is not strong enough to to with, uh, withstand all this uh, excessive exercising. So what happens? Just breaks down, and the heart stops pumping. Yes. You know. If you look at footballers, for example, you know these professional footballers like Chelsea, Man United, you know, after every match, I mean before and after, they must warm up. They warm up before a good at least half an hour, then they play the match, and after that, they cool down for half an hour. So you think when they finish, they just take the shirts off, they go for a shower, and that's it? No way. They have to cool down because the body, in order to preserve, uh, uh, preserve the muscles, and the muscles need, need proper warm-up before this, uh, the strong exercises in the running, and then cool down because it's like a, it's something very, um, it's a sensitive, uh, it's flesh. you got to treat it if you want to have a long life. If you want it to have a long life and last throughout your career, you have to do that. So it's, it's very important uh, to understand this. You know, I always uh, I can't stress it enough uh, because I, when I did PE, uh, physical education, um, not long ago, you know, I was going through these with some of the students, and they're like, "Oh, that's really good. It's, we never we never knew that. No one ever told that told us that." So when you say and speak about these things, they uh, it really opens their eyes. You know, it prevent a lot of injuries. And like you say, yes, stuff, even deaths. You know, these these people that did the marathon, probably nobody guided them. You know. Uh, so okay, I'll do one more question. I'll let you guys go. Okay, what do you need to eat to get red abs, Vladimir? 
You talk oh. about the diet. Proper <laughs> I, I, I w- <laughs> actually you have to say what do what you what, what must and you eat uh, to get what the shouldn't you eat? Yeah. Shouldn't, yeah. Okay, tell us both. Tell us both. What should you eat and what shouldn't you eat? Go on. Okay, I think you should eat more more complex carbohydrates and you should eat uh, more often but use uh, smaller portions. Mm. And what is carbohydrates? Carbs. Mm. Do you know protein, fats and carbohydrates? But uh, I understand. But um, in uh, what food is um, uh, the oh, most oh, carbohydrates? Yeah. Rice, different porridges, pasta, spaghetti, bread. Oh, it's very yeah, it's, uh, bread <laughs> for uh, so, some for sort of bread. You have to be yeah. careful, and some sorts of pasta. Yes, you know there are different. Uh, there's a healthy one. There's a healthy one, and there's not so healthy one. The not so healthy one usually is the one filled with carbohydrates. So it's correct what you say, but you shouldn't have too much carbohydrate because that sort of adds to your uh, to your weight, right? You yes, have a, exactly. you have a balanced amount, right? But like Vladimir is saying, uh, you gotta have the good stuff. What else is there? And you should try to eat as less sugar as you can. Um, Not just uh, real sugar, but uh, the sugar in and other products. Absolutely. Like Coca-Cola. <laughs> Stay away from <laughs> Coke, man. <laughs> in, in general. Yeah, I haven't heard you use one, uh, qu- um, how do you say it? <laughs> Quantifier. Did you use one? There are plenty of opportunities to, to use, like sugars, especially you mentioned sugar. Don't have any sugars, and don't have any sugar. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. Okay, what else? Okay, try to eat yeah. fat, fatless food, more fatless. Mm. Yeah, try to eat um, less fatty food. Yeah, less yeah. fatty food. Yeah, fatty food, which fatty food. Yeah, fatty food is like uh, which, food which has a lot of fat inside and grease and usually junk like food. Instead of beef or pork, mm-hmm. use chicken. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it's chicken breast. Yeah, it's, it's actually the healthiest meat. Mm. And what That's about it. beer? Mm. Well, <laughs> stay away from <laughs> alcohol in general. <laughs> For stomach muscle. <laughs> beer will not give you any muscles. It won't help you. <laughs> beer, <laughs> it will give you a, a stomach you can see. for sure. But not <laughs> it will give you a uh, <laughs> very big muscle. You won't, you won't get this, but you'll get this. Beer, sure. beer belly or... I don't remember. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, you will get this instead. <laughs> you're gonna see this. Oh you're gonna my! Get this. Beer bloat. <laughs> That's a gut. Beer bloat. Beer right. gut. Yeah. They, he he made 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 a lot of exercise with beer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's been lifting. He's been lifting a lot of and, beer and bottles. And now he, now he has one big <laughs> round back. He's got this? bigger arms than his. Than... <laughs> All right, guys. Look, we've gone uh, over the time, and uh, you've done well. Um, we've done a lot of practice at the beginning, and so I'm pretty confident with you guys. And you understand. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I would say that Vladimir should prepare. Exercise for one beer, two beer, three beer, <laughs> and this way I uh, will calm, calm if I drank three beer, for example. Ah, 
Do you drink? I, I thought you said you don't drink. Was it you that told me? Or you like beer? No. I would say if I drink one beer, I should make exercise for one beer. Ah, I see. I see. I see. I see. Uh -huh. If I drink two beer, I should make exercise for three, two beers. Ah. Two beers. Yeah, yeah. Four beers. So the equivalent of of drinking one beer, then you should know how many you know sit-ups you should do, or how many seconds of this stabilization uh, you should do. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Depends how many calories there are. So you can work it out on, on the calories. And um, does it say? I don't know. I, I, I don't drink, so I wouldn't know. It says it on the back. I know the energy drinks and all these other drinks, you can find at the back. It says how many calories per, per 100 milliliters and so on. <clears throat> um, yeah. So there you go, guys. Uh, well done. Uh, are there any questions? No. It's all good, yeah? So feel yeah. free to go yeah, go through this uh, website. It's quite interesting. You can find a lot more exercises there, exercises there, and um, see which one. Not only, uh, you know, exercises, a lot of other things about men's health. So uh, quite interesting website. Mm -hmm. So there you go, guys. Thank you very much for Thank your Thank you very opinions. much. You're welcome. I hope this helped you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, bye. See you. Bye-bye. Have, have a good night. Bye-bye.